Hello, thanks for watching this video. This is one lecture of a course that I'm creating on leaflet programming, and it'll be released on Udemy about the middle of June. So this is one lecture of approximately 70 or 80. And so if you find yourself a little bit lost, just understand if you take the course, everything you need to know will be explained. And I had to edit things a little bit to get it to be short enough to post it into YouTube. So it moves a little bit faster than it would if you were watching the whole course in the Udemy format. Now, if you like what you see, there'll be information at the end of the lecture about how to sign up for the course when it's available. But I won't bombard you with that until after you've seen the whole lecture. So let's get started. Welcome back, students. I'm super excited for this lecture because we're finally going to get to the point where we're going to actually load some GIS data with attributes into Leaflet from GeoJSON files. Now, up to this point in the course, I've been showing you some of the different leaflet objects and controls and how to create them with their options and call their methods and respond to their events. But now, from this point forward, the course is going to change. We're going to be working with a set of data that's derived from a project that I worked on in Colorado. It's not real data. The shapes are the same, but they're not in the right location. It's a realistic data set in terms of complexity and the number of features. And this is the data set that we're going to be working with from here on out. So if we go to the editor, You'll see now we have a data directory, and if we expand that, we have a number of different files, all with the extension GeoJSON. So these files all came from a PostGIS database, I'll show you how in a second. They represent different data layers, but once I've extracted them, they're static files. We can't write anything back to the database with client-side technology, and that's the only thing we're learning in this course. There will be another course on server-side technology where we'll learn how to edit this data and send it back to the database. But for now, we're just going to take a look at how we can load this data, display it, and do some analysis with it. So to create these, I use QGIS. I'd highly recommend downloading it. It's worth the price just for this functionality alone. And that's kind of a joke because it's actually free. Now I have a couple layers here that came from a PostGIS database that I've named Wattenberg. And once they're in here, all I have to do is I can right click on any one of them, click Save As, change the format to GeoJSON, select a location, I'll just call this test GeoJSON. And then in my PostGIS database, all this data is stored in UTM Zone 13 NAT 83. But I want to change that because in Leaflet, I want all my data to be in latitude, longitude, WGS 84. And so this will actually convert this on the fly. And then one more thing that I always do is down here where it says coordinate precision, I change that to 5. That will limit the number of decimal places to five decimal places. And with latitude, longitude, five decimal places is enough to get you within just a little bit more than one meter on the face of the Earth. But because we're sending this data over the Internet, there's no need to have those extra ten digits. It's just taking up a lot of space on the disk, and it's taking up a lot of bandwidth to send it to the client. So I'll hit OK. And there we just created a GeoJSON text file. And that's all that these files are. Now to read this into Leaflet from a text file, we need a Leaflet plugin. I'm going to go to the Leaflet plugin page. Under Dynamic Data Loading, there's a plugin called Leaflet Ajax. All we have to do is do a normal download, and then we'll go to our Downloads directory. I'm going to take the Leaflet Ajax zip file, and I'll go to my htdocs, webmap201, source, plugins, and I'll paste it in here, extract it. Now, the documentation doesn't explain this very well, but all you really need from this directory is this leaflet ajax min JavaScript file. So I'm going to cut that out, go back to my plugins directory, paste it in, and then I'm going to delete everything else. Now we have to go back to our editor, to the index file, and we need to load in this external JavaScript file. I'm going to go back just to make sure I get the name exactly right. I'm going to copy this and paste it in right here. And that's all we need. We've just loaded the Leaflet Ajax plugin. Now to use it, we need to first declare a variable. I'm going to call it layer eagle nest, and then I'll come down and here right above where I create my overlay layers object for the layer control, I'm going to create this layer, layer eagle nest, and I'll set that equal 
to the leaflet geojson.ajax constructor method and I pass it a link to this data file which was called wildlife eagles dot geojson and then I'm going to add it to the map and I'm going to also add it to the overlay section of the layer control just by adding it to this JavaScript object. Okay, I think that's everything. I'm going to save it. Go back to the map. I'm going to hit refresh. The map's loaded. Nothing's happened. Why not? Well, remember I said that this project was in Colorado. So there's a good chance that the reason it's not showing is because we weren't looking at Colorado. Yep, there they are. I'm going to zoom in. Now we can make it so it zooms to this area as soon as this data is loaded. And we'll do that by calling the data loaded event of this layer. So I have the layer. I use the on method. The event is data loaded. And then we write a function that gets run once the data is loaded. And this is important because we're using an AJAX function here. So the browser doesn't stop in its tracks while this is being loaded. We could still pan around, zoom around, do whatever we wanted. So we need this data loaded event for code that we don't want to execute until there's actually a valid Eagle's Nest layer. And what we're going to do as soon as we have that is we're going to call the fitBounds method of the map object and we're going to pass it the bounds of the Eagle's Nest layer. And we do that by calling the getBounds method of the Eagle's Nest layer. All right, we'll save that. Go back, refresh. And this time the map zooms to the Eagle's Nest layer as soon as all that data is loaded. Now, if you remember from the last lecture, our GeoJSON constructor method has a couple options. And those options take functions that get run on the GeoJSON as it's being loaded. One of those functions is called point to layer. And I'm going to give it the name of a function called return eagle marker. Now we haven't written that yet, but we're about to. So I'll come down here to the very end and create that function. Return eagle marker. And it's important that we have this outside, remember we have this document ready function that waits until the whole page is loaded before it executes any of this JavaScript code. And we have to write this function outside of that because we can't declare a function inside of another function. Now let's take a look at the leaflet documentation again. Now under other layers, GeoJSON, we can see that the point to layer option is a function that includes two parameters. One is the GeoJSON object holding the point, and the other is the lat long of the point. What we want to do is return a marker object that we'll use to mark that point. So right now it's got the default marker, but we're going to change that. So I'm going to include this information right here. So now this function is going to get run on every single JSON object. The JSON object itself will have access to through this variable, and then the coordinate will have access to through this variable. So the first thing I'm going to do on this, we'll keep it really simple this time around. We'll return a circle marker, and that's going to get the lat long, it's going to be the center of the circle marker, and then some options for the circle marker say radius of 10 pixels and color deep pink. Okay, so now if we refresh, we should get instead of these blue markers, some deep pink circle markers. Look at that. Now we can do some other things in this point to layer function. For instance, I'm going to declare a variable called at. I'm going to set that equal to json.properties. 
And this will give us access to all the attribute data that we need. And we'll use that to create a tooltip that will appear when we hover over each of these markers. And that tooltip will have attribute data that's specific to that eagle nest. So I'm going to call the bind tooltip method of the circle marker. And in there, we're going to pass some HTML. We'll start with an H4 tag. And in there, we'll write eagle nest. And then we'll add the nest ID property. And then we'll put a closing H4 tag. And some text for the next line. That's just going to say status. And then we'll add that, the status of this particular nest. Looks like I missed a D here. I'm just going to add that in. All right, that looks good. So save it. Go to the map and refresh. And you'll see now. When I hover over it, I get a tooltip that gives the number of the eagle nest and the status. Now, what if we want the color to depend on whatever the status property is? Well, we can do that. We'll write an if statement in here. We'll say if the status property equals active nest, then we'll create a color variable. We'll call it color nest. And we'll leave that at deep pink. Now, if that status is not equal to active, if it's not an active nest, the color nest variable is going to equal C light blue. I think that'll work. And then down here in our options, we need to change the color that's hard coded as deep pink. And we'll change that to color nest. All right, let's go back to the map. We'll refresh it. And there, boy, it's hard to see, but we do have light blue inactive location, light blue, light blue, and then all the pink ones are active nests. So that's pretty cool. So you can see we not only have attribute specific tooltips, but we have attribute specific symbology as well. Now let's take another look at the leaflet documentation. Because one of the other options for the GeoJSON object is a filter option. And the filter option also takes a function that receives a GeoJSON for the feature. And inside that function, if you return true, that feature will be included in the layer. And if you return false, the feature won't be. So say, for instance, we want to filter out all the inactive locations. What we need to do, we'll go back up to where we create the GeoJSON layer. We'll pass it another option that's called filter. That filter is going to take a function called filter eagle nest. And then we'll come down here and create that function. This is just like we did with the return eagle markers. And this time we're not returning a marker, we're returning true or false, depending on whether we want the feature to be included or not. So we'll call this filter eagle nest. We'll call our JSON variable JSON. And just like I return eagle marker function, we'll create an attribute variable that holds the JSON properties. And then we'll have an if function. We're going to say if the status attribute equals active nest, then return true else return false. So now every nest that has a status that's not equal to active nest is going to be filtered out. So let's take a look at that. Go back to the map, hit refresh, and yeah, we still have our pink, our active nest. Those inactive nests with the light blue don't show anymore. So that should give you a little bit of an idea of how we create GeoJSON data, how we can load it into our leaflet map, and we can create feature-specific tooltips, feature-specific symbology, and we can also filter things out based on their attributes.